Well, chances are you have a phone that can take a picture. What it can't do, though, is print that photo onto a metal plate in a matter of minutes. But my next guest will demonstrate how to do just that with a contraption that he built himself. Ian Azariah is a local photographer, and this is called the Tin Type Trike. Great to see you, Ian. Great to see you as well. Thank you so much for being here. Now, there's a lot going on, and I understand the first aspect of this process takes the most amount of time. So shall we just jump into it? Let's jump right into it, indeed. So it's going to be a two-part chemical process that's going to allow me to make an image of you with real silver on top of this very sheet of metal. Okay. Allow me to do it right before you. So here we are. My first chemical is a chemical known as ether collodion. I need an incredibly thin layer of that on top of my metal plate. What this is going to do is it's going to work as an adhesive for my second chemical. My second chemical is what they call silver nitrate. Silver nitrate is nothing more than a brick of silver. Melt in sulfuric acid till it turns into a powder. I mix that powder with distilled water so I can sensitize my plates in it. Okay. As you can see, I'm draining off all the excess from the top of my plate. This is going to leave us with an incredibly thin layer of a tacky surface on top of the metal. As soon as this exposes itself to air for a short period of time, it's going to become gelatinous. And then I'm going to submerge it into my light sensitive tank, of silver nitrate down here below. That has a very strong smell, eh? It certainly does. And so how long does the process take in general? All together from start to finish here until we have an image, it's only going to take us approximately six minutes. So now, at this time, the ether collodion and silver nitrate are inside my tank and they're bonding together to create a light sensitive surface we can photograph on okay. top. Uh, why did you want to do this, Ian? Uh, why I wanted to do this is simply so it opened the door for me to be available to shoot these anywhere I wanted. Otherwise, a lot of photographers are really kind of confined to the space that they work out of because that's where their darkroom is. For example, we're here today, we're in a studio, and I'm able to make a plate happen right here and now, all thanks to this darkroom that I built on the back of the tricycle. Well, when we think about photography today, obviously it's that digital revolution, everything is online, you take a photo and it's on your computer screen in a matter of seconds. Why take us back into maybe that olden day idea of what it, what it means to, to be a photographer and to look at a physical photo? Well, to be a photographer back in the olden day, it wasn't as prevalent as you mentioned. Not everyone could just simply snap photos of their family. So when a photographer showed up in town in that covered wagon I mentioned before, it was an event. And you had to act and you had to act then and now. If you didn't go and see the photographer while they're in town before they dusted along to the next one, you might not have a photograph to encapsulate that memory of that certain period of time. So there is much more importance placed on trying to go and see photographers. And in this day and age, I think that relationship has come back though because with so many images just being pixelized, mm. it would be so difficult 20 years down the road to try and represent that moment in your life that was so special, because what are you gonna do? Scroll 20 years back through your feed? I don't think so. But with a physical photograph, you can pick it up. This is the world's most archival form of photography, so it will last four generations, and it's very easy to be like, this is an incredibly special moment I chose to capture the strongest way possible. This will last four generations. Four generations. It was invented in 1860, and the images that were the first ones made back then are still around today, making big headlines in the auction houses for certain images of famous people of the time, being sold for millions of dollars per plate. So as far as we know, and we can prove, tintype is the historically most photographic process there is in all of photography. Why put it all on a tricycle? Well, that way it just allows me to be mobile because otherwise the only place that I could shoot plates would be within my studio, right next to my darkroom. Now I can go to motorcycle races, I can go into the woods, I can go into Stanley Park, and I can photograph in this particularly special style. So right now I'm just taking the plate out of my bath of silver nitrate, and I'm very carefully going to be loading it into a custom-made back that is going to allow us to get it from here to the camera and back without exposing it to light. What is it like building this particular uh, part of the entire contraption? Oh, an absolute pleasure. <laughs> Love working with my hands and bringing something from concept to reality is always enjoyable. Was there a lot of trial and error? Nope. No? One and done. Right on. So here we go. Let's have you sit down and we're going to make an image of you. Just through here? Indeed. And you mentioned earlier, this requires me to be incredibly still. Right, and the reason for that is not because our exposure is long. Our exposure is going to happen fairly instantaneously. The reason is that my focus is so slim that if you waver backwards or forwards, in between when I'm able to focus it and make the exposure, you might put yourself out of focus. Yeah. So, one more final thing I'm going to do before we get started. I'm just going to have you lift your elbows. Yep. I'm just going to place this right on under there. So put your elbows right on top right of that. There. there we go, perfect. Still as you can, now until the exposure is done. Important question, teeth or no teeth in the smile? Traditionally, I'd go with no teeth.
Three, two, one. All right, you're good to go, that free to move. was an incredibly bright flash. Indeed. So photography-wise, this process is rated as ISO 0 0.5, so it is incredibly insensitive to light. So the only way I've modernized the process is by including this flash. It allows me to stop the action instantly, which gives me the ability to photograph things like kids and pets and families all together without resulting in motion blur, as was very common back in the day. What was that, uh, that research like for you to go back to the 1860s? Yeah, well, enjoyable. I have a background in visual effects and film, and so it was incredibly pleasant for me to be able to return to something physical. Okay. So as you can see, guys, we have a negative of our image. <laughs> and now in order for us to turn it into its final positive, what we're going to do is we're going to drop it into a bath of potassium thysate. The image is then going to inverse and turn into its final positive. That is an incredibly unique process, eh? Absolutely. Now, traditionally, when you talk about that research, how long would this have taken, say, if we were back in the 1860s? How long would have this taken, the yeah, process? Yeah, exactly. Exactly the same amount of time. Except for rather than us shooting it with a strobe, we would have shot it with natural light, and you would have had to stay still anywhere from one second to eight seconds to properly expose it. And already you can see it coming together. Indeed. And one thing that's going to be a little difficult to see unless you get really close up is the detail in these is absolutely unbelievable. In a modern day equivalency, this holds about 180 megapixels worth of information. Such a pleasure to speak with you this absolutely. afternoon. This was the coolest thing. Thank you so much Thank for being so here. Much.